Hi everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple podcast. Apple released some pretty impressive updates for Keynote, including improved synchronization with iCloud and some great new features for Keynote for the Mac and iOS. Because as you know now, those updates are being carried through across platforms. So let's take a look. For Keynote 6.2 for the Mac, Apple introduced a new view only mode for sharing presentations and you can set this up by going to share and then go to view share settings and you'll see here under permissions you have the option to allow editing or to just select view only and then when you go to share it they'll only be able to view it rather than edit it so that's a nice feature to have also with the latest update apple improved magic move and magic move basically allows you to add animations from one slide to the next automatically without having to animate things individually. So let me show you how that works. So I have slide one here. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I have an animation magic move selected and I do. So you wanna select magic move and then you wanna copy that slide. I'm gonna do a command C and then a command V and paste another copy. Now in the second version, I wanna change things. I want to, for example, make this photo fill the entire slide so we get a nice close-up image and I also want to change the text as well so I'm going to go into text I'm going to hit format and I purchased a lot of really fun fonts in the Mac App Store so I'm going to go ahead and maybe select this one and maybe change the size of it to I don't know maybe 180 pixels or something and then I'm going to Go ahead and enlarge that, make sure I get the full 180 pixel range. And I wanted to just show over the photo like that. And maybe control the opacity too. Okay, so I have the same slide, but I went in and changed the elements. And now with magic move selected, when I go to the next slide, those effects are going to take place automatically. Hence, magic. So let's take a look. So I'm going to advance the slide. And voila, the effect is like magic. Okay, so the other two builds that I want to show you are attached to individual elements contained within the slide. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one photo. And then I'm going to choose animate. And I'm going to choose drift and scale. As you can see, it's already selected. What happens with drift and scale is it basically drifts in and then scales out and disappears. So it's not gonna actually stay on screen. So let me go ahead and rearrange this. So I gotta have a reason for why I wanna use this feature. I'm gonna go ahead and move this photo over. And I'm gonna bring this second photo forward. So I'm gonna hit the brush symbol and then select arrange. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that forward. Now I'm going to set this photo up so that it comes in right on top of where this image is. Again, this is just for general purposes. So now I'm going to animate this and I'm going to use the skid option for this. And then under options, or should I say order, I'm going to make sure that the, Ed the Edward Marinet image, which is this one here, comes in behind that one. So it's the second build. Click done. So let's go ahead and play them back. So I'm going to tap on the screen to bring in the first one. It's going to drift and scale out and then tap in to bring the next one, which is the skid animation. So those are the two new animations that are for individual elements contained within the slide. A great new feature that came with the iPad version, and by far my favorite, are these great new annotation tools. So check this out. I'm gonna launch my presentation full screen, and you press and hold on the slide, and all of a sudden you'll get a menu of tools that will appear along the bottom. The first option is a laser pointer. So with that option selected, you can just take your finger and just drag it across the different areas of the slide if you wanna point out certain sections, for example. Here's the artist Messonnier. Here's the artist Messonnier. Here's his studio and other versions of his studio up above. Pretty cool. 
Now, what if you want to circle something? Well, you have colored markers along the bottom. You can choose whatever color you want and then just circle the different areas. For example, here's a painting that Messonnier was working on in the studio. It looks like it could be the Battle of Solferino. And here is the artist down below next to his dog. And here's the artist again next to his dog uh, with also an easel right next to him. This is probably his house, which is referred to as the Grand Maison. And when you're done, just click done and it goes away and you can continue with your presentation. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed the new updates to Keynote for the Mac and iOS. This is Tim Brown. Thanks for tuning in. Check me out next time.